All right, so we did a couple things not on camera. One, I've moved a bunch of rock out of the way because we're gonna extend the driveway down to where our barn's gonna go. Oh, we're working on the barn today. The plans are in my head. I have a piece of printer paper that is terribly sketched out. Um, but the whole plan is to have a 20 foot by 30 foot barn uh, pad. Um, so we're gonna use that as like a barn in a wood shop. And then we're gonna have a 10 foot overhang off of one side. Actually, it's gonna end up being 12 foot. And then a 10 foot overhang off the front. So we'll have 10 feet of covered area off the front of the barn and 12 feet of covered area off the side where we can park like a trailer or something. Um, so we kind of marked out the corners yesterday, not on camera, it was super windy, super cold. We just needed to get it done before Chelsea had to go back to work. Um, and now I'm here and I'm going to mark out the rest of where our holes are going to go. This is going to be a post frame barn. So I'm going to mark out where we're going to auger down for columns to come up to be our supports. And then we're going to pour all the columns and the pad at the same time. I'm going to address this real quick, but instead of using batter boards to lay out the foundation and to lay out where everything was going to go, we used um, concrete stakes that we just put outside of the footprint of the building. So you can see me here measuring between those concrete stakes and placing concrete stakes where we're going to actually end up digging our holes um, and augering down the holes for the foundation. Well, that sucked. Woo! The corner of it landed on my foot. Besides dropping that on my foot, which really hurt, that wasn't too bad. Let's go. So we used this little mini skid steer um, to auger the holes for the columns that we're going to put in to support the building. This is the same thing we used for our back deck, which you actually haven't seen us build yet, but is half built when we did the barn. Um, but when we augered the holes for the back deck, it worked fantastic, except when we did it for this, it's the middle of winter and we had about six to 10 inches of frozen ground and the auger just wouldn't bite through our frozen clay ground. So for every hole, all of our like 15 holes, I had to go through with a pickaxe and break up those six to 10 inches before the auger would really bite down. So once it bit, it bit and it went in great and worked great, but do it maybe in the spring, summer, fall, not in the winter when the ground's frozen. I do want to shout out MTS, Bobcat, and Landscaping up here in Northern Arizona. If you need rock or any work, give them a call. They were great to work with. Um, they kind of saved my butt in this. I had a contractor lined up to deliver a bunch of rock, and he said he would get it done. And then he told me that his truck was broken, but he was able to get a truck and could get it done. And then the day before I was supposed to get it, he said, oh man, I can't do it, sorry even though we had planned a couple weeks in advance. So they were able to get me all of these cinders and fill material as well as that riprap about with a pretty much a day's notice. So I'm really thankful of that. Otherwise we would have been really delayed.
So where we're putting the barn is sloped. Um, it's about six inches, actually more like 10 inches lower on one side than it is the other side. So with this fill dirt, we basically have no fill at the top of the, the barn section. And then we have about six to eight inches or 10 inches of fill at the bottom sloped of the barn section to make it completely level where we're gonna end up pouring our pad. So after getting all the dirt flattened out for the most part and pretty good, I then went through and compacted it all and got it compacted this for probably like three hours. So it should be nice and solid and we shouldn't have any issues underneath the pad. All these cinders are also going to help with drainage underneath the pad. So because it does freeze where we are, we're not going to get water build up directly underneath our pad, which is then going to freeze and we're going to get like heaving of the pad. So. Um, we should be good as far as drainage goes and as far as stability goes under this. I'm not gonna go into a bunch of detail. I'm just forming up the exterior of the pad. And as you can see, the columns that are gonna support the posts of our barn are actually inside that footprint. Um, if you want a detailed video about how to make concrete forms or something a little more detailed, I'll put a link to our other video up in the corner here. Um, and then I will note that we did put rebar in the slab about every two inch on center. So we have a rebar grid in it. It's about four inches thick and then all of our columns that go down past the frost line to support our posts are within the slab. This was a rough 20 minutes. I had originally planned on the concrete truck backing up all the way into the forms and then just being able to actually place the concrete where we needed it. Um, but it, the truck couldn't make it all the way back. Um, so we ended up doing a lot of pulling and moving about, we used 11 yards in concrete total for all of the columns and the slab. So this was probably about four of that 11 um, just on this one side and pulling four yards of concrete is not very fun so that was just a little oversight a pump might have been better but this worked out and i'm thankful to have all the help that we did have um because i don't think we would have done it otherwise it 
It was a little funny. As we got close to getting the slab done, um, about over halfway or about three quarters of the way, we took the wheelbarrow and we started filling all of the columns that we had outside of the slab, which was about seven columns outside of the slab. We started filling those with concrete and we got to the point where we had two columns left and the guy got back in his truck and I said, uh, hey, you got any more in there? And he's like, no, I'm empty. And I'm like, can we try? And he poured, I think, two more wheelbarrows out of his truck and then we were able to fill those last two columns, but we emptied the truck out of 11 yards. So we used 11 yards exactly and he was probably weighted a little heavier than 11 yards. So. Uh, we had just enough concrete. It kind of would have sucked not having enough, but we would have just ended up using bags of concrete for the last couple of columns, so it wouldn't have been a big deal. It's really windy, so I apologize, but it's been just over a week since we poured the slab. I'm gonna go ahead and take all the forms off. We were on vacation for a week, so we poured the slab and then two days later left. So take all the forms off, get all the, uh, get that all off of it, and then I've been working on my wood order behind us, um, and we should be ready to build, pick up all the wood tomorrow and start building. So should be good. And all the metal for the siding came in and the roofing, so we should be able to get siding on and roofing almost right away. All right, let's get, get these forms off. Be a little bit of a task, but let's do it. Real quick, I did want to say thank you again to everyone who came out and helped. Originally, we were planning on only having like four people here to do it, um, and then a bunch more people showed up, and I don't think we would have been able to do it without them. So I really appreciate everyone's help. Um, it turned out fantastic. We did turn out with like three little spots in it that were maybe an eighth inch low, um, but it's a barn. It doesn't really matter, and you can't tell when you're walking on it um, that anything's out of out of level you might be able to see them there a little bit in the uh in the in the middle of the slab there but besides those three little spots it's fantastic and like i said it's a barn and a wood shop it doesn't need to be perfect everything rolls on it smooth they're not deep enough that anyone's going to trip or anything's going to get caught or anything like that it's just kind of cosmetic things but um otherwise fantastic uh it was it was great so i'm glad to get this done i can't wait to move on to the framing of the barn and then get it done and be able to have a space to raise our chicks in, raise our chickens in, and then also have a dedicated wood shop so I can bring my table saw back up from Phoenix. It's going to be great. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't subscribed already. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. Leave any questions you have for me down in the comments, and I will try to answer them the best I can. I know this video wasn't super detailed. It was just kind of the nature of the beast. I was working every day, and then when I was supposed to be sleeping, I was working on the barn, so I ended up only getting about two hours of sleep every day I was doing the slab. So uh, it just is what it is. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. What the fuck am I doing?